Hey everyone, so I just wanted to use this video to introduce to you guys Pascal's triangle, uh, including what it is, how it's defined, and some interesting properties. So probably the best way to place to start is to discuss how to create Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle um, is essentially going to be something similar to a, sequ a set of sequences, all right? Um, but it's kind of um, it's kind of represented geometrically in a sense, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So um, there's going to be essentially a series of rows uh, to this sequence. So in the first row, we're just going to have a single number, and that number is going to be the number one. Okay. Now in the next row, uh, we're always going to add another another term. So the next row is going to have two terms in it, and the idea is that the term on the very left of this row and the term on the very right of this row are each going to have a value of one. So that makes the next row one and one. Now, the next row, again, is going to have one more term than this one, which means that it's going to have three terms. And just like the one previous, the one on the very left and the one on the very right are going to have values of one. But that means that there's going to be a term in the middle. And we're going to have to think about how to get the value of that term. So the rule is to get the value of the terms in the, the middle of uh, this row, you're going to actually take a look at the row above it, particularly these two terms, and you're going to add them together. Right? So this, the idea is that this term is going to appear, appear in between these two terms, and to get the value of this term, you're going to add the two above it. So 1 plus 1, of course, is 2, so that means that, that we have a value of 2 in the next row. And we're going to kind of continue on in the same fashion. So in the next row, since the, uh, we're going to have one more term than the previous row, and since the very left and very right terms are going to be 1, Right? Our first term is going to be 1. Our second term here is going to be the sum of the two terms above it. Okay, so 1 plus 2 is 3. The next term, again, is going to be the sum of the two terms above it, which means we have 2 plus 1, which is also 3. And then, of course, we have one more, and that, of course, is going to be the last term, which will have a value of 1. So we kind of continue on in this very same fashion to build uh, Pascal's triangle. So in terms of the next row, that means that we're going to have 1 as our first term. Uh, the next term is going to be the sum of the two above it, so 1 plus 3 is 4. The next term is the sum of the two above that. 3 plus 3 is 6. The next term is going to be 3 plus 1, which is 4. And then the last term is just going to be the number 1 again. All right, and I think I'm going to do one more row for you right now. So next row, we start with 1. All right, 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 plus 4 is also 10. 4 plus 1 is 5. And then the last term is going to be 1. And we can keep going like this forever, but I'm just going to stop here for a moment. Okay, so the next thing. Uh, every single term, uh, or every single row here is going to have a particular number to represent that row. So the very top term is not going to be actually row 1, we're actually going to call that uh, row 0. Alright, so that very top point is going to be row 0. The next row is going to be row 1. Okay, then we have row 2, and row 3, and row 4, and so on and so forth. So every row has a number starting from 0. Okay, and then also uh, every term is going to have a position. So the idea is that every um, every you have uh, several rows, and each term in any particular row is going to have a, an, a unique position, and that position is also going to be represented by a number. So what you're going to notice is that all the terms on the very left of each row, right, those are all going to be essentially the first position, although we call that position zero. Okay, all the terms next to that are going to be position 1, all the terms next to that are going to be position 2, next to that will be position 3, and so on and so forth. So um, this is going to allow us to sort of identify uh, or, or sort of name each term in Pascal's triangle uniquely by its row number and its position number. So. Uh, because each term has a row number and a position number, we actually have a set of standard variables to represent these things. So for example, the row number of any particular term is going to be given by the letter n, and the position number of any particular term is going to be given by the letter r. Okay, So uh, we're going to use a notation similar to when we were discussing sequences, right, where we have uh, with sequences, you know, we might refer to uh, Tn, so the term at position n. Now, this time, we're going to have to refer to uh, the term at uh, in row n at position r. All right, so we're going to need both of these values to um, uniquely identify a particular term. So we're going to say Tn comma r is going to be the term in row n at position r. Okay, and again, 
because each term has a unique row and position, this is going to allow us to um, uniquely identify each term or uniquely name each term in uh, Pascal's triangle. So what I think we should do is we should probably pick out a particular term. So I'm going to pick out this guy right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can name this term. So what you're going to notice is if you count the row numbers from the top, so let's see, so row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, so it appears to be in row 5, and if you count from the left to, uh, to uh, the right, if you count uh, position 0, position 1, and so on, so 0, 1, 2, 3, it looks like it's going to be in row 5, position 3, which means that this is going to be T5, comma 3. So this is the term in row 5, position 3. So this, again, uh, is the unique name for that particular term. Uh, what we can also do is we can start with the, the unique name for, the, for a term and we can actually see what the value of that term is. So for example, let's suppose I wanted to know what uh, the term was in row 4, position 1. Uh, well, let's see here. So row 4, I can count down uh, row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that puts us in this row right here. And uh, let's see, counting from the left, we're at position 0, and the next one will be position 1, which means that we are going to have a value of 4 for the term at row 4, position 1. Now, one thing that you might notice that's kind of interesting is that whenever the position number of a particular term is 1, then uh, that's actually going to give you the row number. So that's basically going to be all the terms right here. Uh, they are essentially going to be... Um, giving you the actual row number, okay? So let's kind of move on from here. So once again, I'm going to draw out Pascal's triangle, although I'm going to put in an extra, um, an, an extra row for us here to work with. Uh, remember that every single row has a particular number, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this case, and every uh, term has a position number as well, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is what we need to go up to in this particular case. Um, so a couple things that we're going to kind of want to notice here. Um, I want you to notice that um, all of the terms in position 0, so these guys right here, all those terms, um, they all appear to be 1, right? So what that tells us is that if r is equal to 0, which means we're in position 0, so if r is equal to 0, then the term at uh, those positions is going to be 1. Alright, and one other thing is I'm going to get you to look at the other edge of Pascal's triangle. That's going to be these values right here. Now, if um, we're talking about those values there, one th it might be a bit harder to notice, but uh, you're going to notice that all those terms have the same row number and position number. So the row number and the position number are actually equivalent values for all those, which tells us that if r is equal to n, well then the terms in all of those positions is also going to be 1. So tn comma r is also going to be equal to 1. Now that actually allows us to come up with a fairly easy uh, way or easy uh, way of determining the edge value of values of Pascal's triangle. Um, but of course it doesn't give us a particular nice way of, uh, of um, representing the terms in the middle. So we're going to see if we can kind of come up with one. Um, and the best way to do this, I think, is to go through some examples. So, for example, let's take a look at the term at position, sorry, at row, in row 5, position 2. So row 5, position 2, uh, that would be this term right here. Um, now, I want you to consider, how did we get that term to begin with? Well, we added the two terms above it, right? So we added uh, the term in row 4, position 1, with the term in row 4, position 2. Okay, so that's how we got the term in row 5, position 2. All right, let's try another one, and we're going to see if we can kind of come up with a pattern here. Uh, the ter uh, term in row 6, position 4, well, row 6, position 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be this, oops, this guy right here. Okay, and again, to get that one, we added the two terms above it. Well, what are the two terms above it? Well, it would be the term in row 5, position 3. That would be that value of 10 above it. And then the term in row 5, position 4, that would be the 5 above it. So I want you to take a quick look at those two statements, those two equations we just kind of put together, and see if you can notice anything. The first thing that you might notice is that 
um, to get the term in, say, position, uh, sorry, in row five, position two, we added two terms with or from row four, which kind of makes sense. We already know that to get a, a particular term, we add terms from the row above it, right? So that makes sense. The row number of the two terms that we added together is going to be one less than the term that we end up getting. And then the other thing I'm going to get you to notice, actually, is that the position numbers also seem to follow a pattern. So to get the term in row 5 position 2, we added a term in position 1 with a term that was also in position 2. So also, to get the term in uh, row 6 position 4, we added two terms. One of them was in position 3, and the other one was in, in position 4. So it seems like the two terms that we add together, one of them is going to have a, a position number that is one less than the term we're talking about, and then the other one is going to have the very same position value. And that actually allows us to come up with a general rule for generating the values in Pascal's triangle. So the formula for Pascal's triangle is going to kind of take the following form. So the first thing is we want to deal with those edge values. So we had said, well, if r is 0, if the position number is 0, then the term at that position is going to have a value of 1. We also said that if the position has the same value as the row number, then we're also going to get a term value of 1. And then we want to talk about all those numbers kind of that were not edge values. Well, those are cases where the position number is somewhere between 0 and the row number. So we say if 0 is less than r is less than n, then what we do to get the term at or row n position r is we take the term in the row above it, that's t n minus 1, in the position before it, r minus 1, and to that we add the term in the row above n, so that would be t n minus 1, and it will have the very same position uh, as the one we're finding, which would also be r. So this is going to be sort of the formula for determining values in Pascal's triangle. And one thing you're going to notice is that it's almost, um, it's almost defined recursively a little bit. You might recall that we talked about recursive sequences before. This is sort of like a, almost like a recursive formula for Pascal's triangle. Okay, so the next thing I actually want to talk about in terms of Pascal's triangle is one of the uh, interesting patterns that seems to come from Pascal's triangle. Now, there are many patterns that uh, come out of Pascal's triangle, but we're going to be looking at one in particular. Um, and this is going to be one called row sums. So once again, I'm going to draw out Pascal's triangle, right? We've got the first six rows of Pascal's triangle. Well, I guess technically first... Um, yeah, this is for six rows. Um, and, of course, we know that each of these rows has a row number. Okay, And I'm going to leave out the position numbers in this case because they're not going to be as relevant to row sums since, of course, we're talking about rows in this case. So um, what are row sums? Well, essentially, we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each row and we're going to add every single term in that row. So starting from row 0, the sum of all the terms, well, since there's only one term and that's 1, the row sum, of course, is just going to be the value of 1. Okay, so looking at the next row, that's going to be row 1. What we're going to do is we're going to add together the two terms in row 1. Well, we get 1 plus 1, and of course that's 2. Okay, looking at row 2, we're going to have 1 plus 2 plus 1. So that's 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So the row sum there is 4. The next one, we have 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So the row sum for that one is 8. Next one, we're going to have 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 6 is 11 plus 4 is 15, plus 1 is, of course, 16. Uh, and you might kind of be starting to see a pattern of for, uh, forming here. Um, you can probably guess that the next row sum is going to be 32. And if you want, you could double check it. 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 10 is 16, plus 10 is 26, plus 5 is uh, 31, plus 1 is 32. And then, of course, you might notice that the last one's going to be 64. And again, I, I, if you want to check that one, you can, but I'm just going to going to assume that you kind of see the pattern here. Um, so you can see that each row sum is going to be doubling for each consecutive row. Um, but also, is uh, the one interesting property is that the row sums are all going to be powers of 2. So for example, uh, the first row sum we got was 1. That's just 2 to the power of 0. The next row sum is 2. That's 2 to the power of 1. 
The next one after that, well, that's 2 to the power of 2, and 2 to the power of 3, and 2 to the power of 4, and so on and so forth. Now, the fact that these are powers of 2 is interesting, but what's a little bit more interesting, if you haven't noticed, is that the power of 2 that we're dealing with is actually the row number. So, for example, the one that we just did there, right, we had uh, the row, a row sum of 16. We recognize that that's just 2 to the power of 4, but notice that we were working in row 4. So we had 2 to the power of 4 in row 4, and that's actually going to be the case with every single row. So for example, next one is, um, is row 5, and we end up getting 2 to the power of 5, and then the next one is, um, is row 6, and we get 2 to the power of 6. So this is one of the interesting properties of Pascal's triangle, and we can actually kind of uh, generalize here. So we can say, in general, the sum of the terms in row n of Pascal's triangle is 2 to the power of n. So I hope that this was an okay introduction to Pascal's Triangle. You may need to rewatch the video, and that's fine. Um, but I just wanted to make sure you guys knew what it was and some interesting properties. Anyways, that's it for this video. Take care, everyone.